Hey, it's Jeff here, and I want to talk to you about custom reports in Google Analytics, especially when it comes to reporting on e-commerce features. Now, we had a question come in in our forums from one of our members who wanted to know exactly how you can compile a report that features both revenue, quantity of products, the product purchased, as well as the e-commerce conversion rate. He was banging his head against the wall trying to figure out how to get all those things to play nicely together. And so I wanted to answer that question for him. So if you watch along in this video, we are going to show you exactly how you can answer that question. It's a little bit more complicated than you might think. There's not really an easy answer, but I want to show you my decision-making process and how we think through these problems. And at the end, I actually have a call to action for you. So if you watch all the way to the end, you can see that call to action. And I want to know what you think about it. Do you want to see the follow-up video that we suggest at the end of that video. So you need to watch all the way to the end in order to truly hear that part at the end, and I think it's gonna be worth it. So if you want an insight into custom reports in Google Analytics, e-commerce reporting, as well as the Google Analytics API, hint, that might be the thing at the end, then watch this video. You're really gonna enjoy it. Let's talk about how do you customize Google Analytics e-commerce reports. And this is specifically a video about custom reports in Google Analytics. Now, the reason why custom reports exist in Google Analytics is so that we can tie together two or more metrics and dimensions from the stock reports. So if you're looking at a report and you want to know how do you merge traffic data, the landing page, and conversion rate all in one spot, it gets to be difficult to do that, or you might not be able to get exactly what you need in the standard Google Analytics interface, so you would generate a custom report. Now, while you're thinking that custom reports might be great, I wanted to issue you a warning, and that is that not everything you can dream of is something that you can do within Google Analytics. And that's because not every dimension and metric is meant to be compared to each other. There are scope issues where some things are only collected on a hit level, some are collected on a session level, and some are connected to a user, and they don't always work between each other. But before we get into that explanation, you might be wondering to yourself, what is a metric and what is a dimension? Think about it this way. A dimension is the row of data that you see. So basically a label on the left-hand side and then the row of data in your table. And the metrics, they're the columns. Basically, they're the numbers that go into your reports. And so that's the difference between a metric and a dimension. Now, not all dimensions and metrics work together. You can see here from this warning from Google is that not everything can be queried together. Only certain things that are valid can be discovered as combinations. And Google does have an explanation as to what valid means, but it's sort of hard and convoluted, and it's not something I can really explain to you very well in this short of a video. But if you want to, you can test out combinations with Google, and they will tell you whether these things are going to work or not. So I found this really cool little tool where you can do the dimensions and metrics explore and play around with it and see if things work together. And in our live demo in just a second here, I'm going to show you how this works and how it helps us find out our answers. Now, it's easy to have problems finding valid combinations within your reports. If you look at reports long enough, if you spend any amount of time in Google Analytics generating reports, you are going to find that there are problems that end up happening. And one of my students in analytics course named Elgi, he said the same thing. He had a really big problem with trying to find something in a custom report. Now, he couldn't find a way to do a report that had products, quantity, revenue, and e-commerce conversion rate all in one spot. And he tried a few things, Googled for answers, and couldn't find the answer. And so I said, let's see if we can figure it out for you. And so let's go into Google Analytics and see if we can find the answer to Elgi's question. Okay, so here we are in Google Analytics, and we are using the Google Merchandise Store demo account to conduct this test. And as you can see, I've already developed an e-commerce report, I'm trying to take a look at it and see if we can get the answers that Elgi is looking for. And we have in here product, quantity, and product revenue. That works just fine, but if I want to edit this report, you'll notice that I can't add in the third piece that he's seeking, which is e-commerce conversion rate. So if I click here and I say add metric and I say e-commerce, it goes away. But if I were to get rid of the product, for example, and then I go in here and I type e-commerce, you see e-commerce conversion rate jumps in. So it's like you can have everything from a quantity, revenue, and e-commerce conversion rate, but you can't do it at a product level from a dimension. And so that makes it so that it's really difficult for him to create his report, if not impossible, within the interface. Now, the reason why this ends up happening when you think about it is that a product is not something that you have a conversion rate on. A product is something that happens when somebody adds to their cart and converts. So product is not something that usually has a conversion rate. When you think about it, when you shop at a store, the conversion rate is on the user perspective on that session. So if I come in and I buy, I convert. But 
they don't really look at it from a product level because not every product gets purchased every single time that somebody purchases. And frankly, it probably doesn't get purchased the majority of the time. And so that conversion rate would actually be pretty low when it comes down to it. So really, if you're looking at product conversion rate, what you're really trying to find is the conversion rate of people who maybe viewed the product who ended up buying or something around a product specific metric when you're getting in there. And so Google Analytics has not set up the capability to do conversion rate on a product because they look at conversion rate from a user on a session perspective. Now, if we go into other reports in Google Analytics, it seems like we have the same story. So if we go in here and we look at the product performance report within the e-commerce section of Google Analytics, we can see all the different purchases that have happened, what, what products had the most revenue. We can see some of the shopping behavior that's going in here, how many people are adding it to cart. That's pretty cool to see how much of this is happening. But there's no ability in here to add conversion rate. Now we have product name, we have quantity, and we have price, we have revenue, we have all those different items coming in. But what we don't have is we don't have conversion rate. So if I go in here, secondary dimension, and I type in e-commerce, see we don't have an e-commerce conversion rate. It's not available to us. So Google Analytics, we're 0 for 2 looking at that. We go into places like the e, the landing page report. Now we can see conversion rate within here, e-commerce conversions within this area, we can see transactions and revenue, but we don't actually see the conversion rate. So if somebody touched the home page, they do tell us how much revenue came in, how much conversions came in from there, but they're not telling us the conversion rate. And so the next thing I was thinking about is, well, can you create an advanced segment? Can you do a segment that says, okay, how many users, you know, instead of looking at hundred percent, how about the people who just bought what landing pages did they go to? And so the next thing we did is I tried to build out a, uh, basically tried to figure out what the conversion rate is of people who bought the product maze pen. Now this is of all users. It's basically saying the sequence is that a product contains maze pen. Okay. That's the name of one of the products that we have in our custom report. So if we look here, we say product contains maze pen. Now, if we go back to our custom report, we can see that maze pen is the highest quantity selling product. They've sold 1300 of them for $1,100 in revenue. So not a very expensive product, but they've sold the most of those. And so looking at this, can we create a segment of people who have bought a maze pen? And if I go in here, I can see that, yes, I can create a segment, but it's overinflated. It's saying basically that 8,682 people bought a maze pen. Doesn't really make sense, does it? Because we only have 1,100 purchases. So this is a false positive. Now I've tried other, looking at other reports, do we create one around conditions and say that the product, that the product that we're looking at contains maize pen, see if this works. And we, if we, if we look at that filter, the, the percentage stays the same, even if we get rid of our other conditions. So this isn't really leading us anywhere either. So it's, it's basically it doesn't seem like it's possible to generate this report, but I'm, I'm not sure if I'm satisfied with that answer. You think that if you played around enough, if you were creative enough, you could figure it out. And so I started playing around some more and then I said, well, what about in the reporting API? Because basically if you could build a segment and you had to be very specific and say, I only want the maze pen and get the conversion rate for that, you'd be having to build this gigantic segment that would be unwieldy anyway, because we're talking about doing this for hundreds to thousands of products that, that have been purchased. You see, there's 122 products that have been purchased here. So that would be a pain in the butt to have to manage that as well. So I think the answer ends up being, can we do this in the Google Analytics API? And so if we look at the API Explorer, this is something that I showed you a little bit earlier in my slide deck. Um, this is a lot of scrolling here, but in the area, what I did is I went to build out, can I create this segment? And so the way that the API Explorer works and Metrics Explorer basically tells you whether or not you can build the segment or the custom report you're looking for. And in this case, what I did is I said, can I look at product first and foremost? So I checked this off and I said, can I get product? And notice if you check product, some other stuff becomes unavailable to you. And so you need to look at it from that perspective. So yes, we can have the dimension product name in a report. And then I went through again and I said, okay, well, can we add revenue? And I checked that box and I said, yes, we can add revenue. And then I went through again and I typed in, can we look at quantity? How many people bought? And you can see here, yes, quantity is available. And then the final one is e-commerce conversion rate. So I checked out e-commerce and it says, yes, we can do e-commerce conversion rate. So when you look at it this way in the API Explorer, if you expand just the e-commerce section, we are able to, and it doesn't gray them out. So that means that it is a valid segment. We are able to do product name. We are able to do the e-commerce conversion rate 
quantity and product revenue all in one spot, all one big happy family. So that is the answer. And that is, yes, you can do it, but you have to do it through the API. This obviously shuts out quite a few people from the ability to do this because most people don't want to play with the API. They might not have a development background, but it is possible. And so you have to decide whether or not this data is important enough to do an API call. It's actually not nearly as hard as you'd think it would be. You could use a tool like Supermetrics and you could get that going in very little time if you wanted to. You could even use the free Google Sheets add-on in the API. You can get it at this information, answer the questions that you're looking to answer, and get an answer pretty quick. And frankly, once you get comfortable with the API, it's way better than doing custom reports anyway. Custom reports are very limited. I find that even though it seems like you should be able to get stuff together, like an Elgi's question, that you should be able to get these things together, it never ends up working that way. And so that's what I would do. I would do the API, I would come up with that, I'd develop a report, and I'd pull it all together. Now, for those of you who are listening along, I'm going to offer you a challenge. Do you want to see me build this thing out in the API? Do you want to see me turn this into a spreadsheet and build this thing out? If you are, then leave a comment. Hit that comment button. Please let me know by leaving a comment on this video or on the accompanying blog post, because I think it'd be really fun to see this and to make it a case study on how we can build this thing out using the Google beta account on the Google Analytics store. And while you're at it, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates. You can be the first one to know whenever we release a new video on our channel. And while you're at it, I'd encourage you to subscribe to our free Google Analytics mini course over at analyticscourse.net. I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure you leave a comment if you want to see part two.